Hi everybody, I'm Sarah, the Real Simple Mama, and you are so lucky you don't have to see my face today. And this video is going to be fairly quick, I think. And what I'm gonna do is two things really quickly. I'm gonna show you um, a few things that we've updated around the chicken coop, just if you've been following our progress with this coop that we actually inherited here at our rental house, like cha-ching, how lucky was that? And then, I need help. So I'm gonna show you real quick, uh, just a couple of silly little things that we've done, things that I recommend you do that are really cheap, really easy. And then um, something that's coming over the next month or two, I'm strategizing, but I don't know exactly how I'm gonna do it. So, first the updates. Um, I have done a video that's, I mean, it's already gotten over a thousand views. I don't know what's wrong with all of you people, but I did a video about um, just flying pests, flies, mosquitoes, and wasps. And so I have experimented with, and you can watch that video if you want to, but one of the things that I told was told that was really good for repelling flies and wasps and all kinds of flying things is the vanilla scented trees that you hang in your car, just the vanilla ones. So there's one right here and there's one right up there. Um, and I'm not really having much of a fly problem in the coop right now. Now granted, it's not super hot right now, it's in the 70s. The girls are always shaded because they have a solid roof. And you know, it's not too hot and it's breezy, so flies aren't really a problem. I'm also keeping their ground pretty darn clean, so there's not a lot of poop and stuff in here. That, you know, if you give your chickens, um, you know, any kind of like they got uh, some watermelon the other day, you know, you want to make sure you come and clean out any watermelon rind or the end of the cabbage head or anything that your birds don't eat. Keep everything very clean and make sure you're scraping out and cleaning the poop on the regular. So, but I mean, there's like almost no flies. Like I don't feel like I have a problem with mosquitoes or anything. And I've been standing in here for like 10 minutes doing other videos and doing chores. The other thing that we've added is one of these nasty fly traps. And they're gross as far as fly traps go. And the problem is, you know, I'm almost kind of doing two opposite things here. I'm trying to repel them here, but I'm trying to attract them right there. So it's two different goals. Ow, hey, don't you pick my foot blue. Oh my gosh. Shh. But to be honest, let me get out of here because they're going after my feet. To be honest, um, I already had most of this stuff except for the little dollar trees or whatever. So, shit. Whew. So, I already had this little thing and it works with, you basically have a, a pack of, a package of stinky stuff and you put water in it and the flies get in but they can't get out and they fly and fly and fly until they can't fly anymore and then they drown, which is, you know, it is what it is. And then when it gets really full or a lot of the water has evaporated or whatever you keep the container and you just dump that out and then you buy like another package of stinky stuff where you could put raw meat or something nasty in there and then at least it's not wasteful in that you're throwing out that entire thing so that's another update if you haven't seen our silly little dollar store mirrors i put them there um i did hang them up high enough that they're not getting you know poop on them or, or anything like that but chickens are fascinated with looking at themselves. And I've, I mean, and it's right here by their feeder. I put it there on purpose. And sometimes they just stop and, and they're just, you know, they're fascinated by looking at themselves. So it's just another little silly thing. The other thing I wanted to show you, oh look, there's an egg. And there's more eggs over there. Oh, look how cute. Is we have been trying to train our chickens to actually sleep on the roost like they're supposed to and not up here. It's not dangerous for my chickens to be in the wrong spot, but basically that was just a support beam and you can see the solution is we just put some chicken wire up there and blocked off that space because when they were sleeping all the way up there, first of all, I mean like I can't even reach up there. It's easily six and a half feet off the ground. It makes me a little bit nervous, but the other thing was that when they were up there, the poop was falling down here on all of the places where it wasn't supposed to. This wood is not sealed or treated or anything because the it, it's not supposed to have poop on it. So the chickens, you know, it, it was a lot messier to clean up and it was just like, no, bad chickens. We don't want you doing that. So they're now sleeping up on the top roost that they're supposed to. Oops, and I just broke a spider web. I'm sorry, buddy. So there's the quick updates. I do still have, imagine me flicking them off. A couple of active wasp nests. They are paper wasps. You can hear me complain all about them in that other video. So I do want to knock these nests and things down. I just haven't done it yet. So let's talk about how I need help. And I am gonna step out of the coop for this. You brats. I just did a video on the Lixit treat ball. If you wanna watch it, it's hilarious. So that's why they're kind of, my chickens are excited right now because they're, it's over there by Flopsy. She's playing with it. So, here's the plan, and I feel really guilty, forgive me for not giving you something interesting to look at while I lock them up. I feel really guilty for keeping the girls in this coop because 
if you've watched my older content when I had that innovation pet coop kit, the gray blue one, the chickens had a much smaller coop, of course, but then they had yard space where they were outside. Whoa, whoa, hey, hey. Callie, what's the problem? Where they were outside, you know, on the dirt, in the grass, and things like that. Here at this house, we haven't done that yet just because, you know, we've moved. Uh, my husband works for a school district. We've got a son who started kindergarten. Um, you know, life was just insane, and the birds are safe, and they're okay right now. But, so here's, let me explain what I want to do, and then, um, you know, hopefully some of you guys who have either built your own coops, or you just, I don't know, maybe you just have expertise, because everybody's smarter than I am. You guys can tell me how you think I should do this. So, let me drag this pallet out of the way. What we want to do is we want to build a run for the chickens. There's another space where basically they could be on the ground and I'm going to have grazing boxes for them. They're going to get to eat grass and be out and get bugs and things like that. This space has a lot of advantages the way it was built because they're safe. They never get wet. It stays really cool in there. It's all of the space that they need, right? And that's going to remain their essential space. But I want to design another zone where they can go out. They can be in the sunlight. They can go forage. I'm going to plant stuff for them or I can rotate pots in and out so that they can eat different stuff. So what we're going to do, and you can look this up on Pinterest. I've talked about it before. Um, there's ways that you can build. They're, they're just called like tunnel runs. And essentially you're giving your chickens like a narrow, long space instead of like a big chunk of yard. What we want to do, because we have this shed right here and there's only a couple of feet of space and then it's up in the corner. So we want to give them the space back behind the shed to the corner back through here and then stop where their grazing box is or maybe let them come out a little bit farther. So it's, excuse me, it's gonna give them a lot more square footage and it's double advantage because I don't want my kids going back and playing like around back over here. So otherwise it would just have been dead space. But now I can give it to my chickens. I could landscape it a little bit, put some bushes or things in there that I know are chicken friendly, chicken safe, and I can decide if I want it to be something that they're gonna eat or something that they don't eat or whatever. I know how I'm going to fence everything up. You can see the way that we built our run with the wooden posts and everything. We brought all that with us, so that's not the problem. The problem is I want to be able to close off that run when I want to. We're going on a few trips this summer. Um, if it's just an overnight trip or something, then I'm just going to leave my girls locked up in there, and I don't want them to be able to go out here because this space won't be as controlled. Um, we're debating on whether or not we're even gonna put a roof on this space or if it's just gonna be, we have a fence here. Because if you look over here, technically I don't even have to build anything at all. And obviously this is all going out with like, you know, the garage or the garbage pickup, whatever they call it. Um, so there's our posts, right? We just redid our porch, so that's getting thrown away. But I don't have to build a wall on this side. I don't have to build a wall on this side. We just, if we wanted to, we could put something as a ceiling, um, you know, to keep hawks or, or wild birds or whatever out of the zone. But other than that, we don't have to do anything in this whole area. But the question is, we're gonna cut just, you know, a, a door space, almost kind of like a doggy door stall right there. But I wanna be able to close it off. So I'm wondering, I know there are chicken coop doors that are automatic and you either put them on a timer or they are solar powered and they, you know, they close when the sun goes down or whatever. But I'm trying to think about what would be the best way to do that because I'm cutting a hole in hardware cloth. Um, and you know, obviously this would all just be cut, but it would just be like a chicken sized hole right there and at night you know I would come out and just go boom, and just close it off right because the girls are gonna go sleep in there they don't need to be in this outside space at night and if it's raining real bad then maybe I'll keep them in there or you know other reasons to keep them locked up I'm going out of town or whatever then I could do that and they would be fine in there for a couple of days because all of their essentials are in there so the question is what should I do to make this divider I mean it could be as simple as like a I, I don't know a piece of two by four that I just go kink down like that but I don't know if there's a better idea I don't know if I would need to frame around the hardware cloth like I'm not sure exactly how I want to do that and before we go cutting into this and making this not predator secure anymore you know we want to have a plan so I don't know if there's automatic doggy doors um, I don't know if we should use an automatic chicken door and <laughs> Calypso's playing with that treat ball so that's that's the plan for us and essentially you know it would have to be covered or opened up or whatever to this zone but then we're gonna have them go over that way. Just wondering what would be the best way to do this so that it's secure, so that it's, um, I don't need it to be an automatic door. I would manually come out and do it every morning and every evening, but just what, I'm wondering what would be the best thing to do. 
So give me your suggestions. Let me know what you think. Um, you know, we definitely want to do this by this summer. The chickens have enough space to be safe. You know, certainly they're not like abused animals that are in egg factories and they never see the sunlight and anything like that. But I do want to give them more space. And if I can get more space, you know, and at least double their square footage in their foraging room, we are hoping in the late fall to clean up the quarantine pen that's back over there. You can see the roof. Like this rental house has a quarantine chicken pen. It's like, hallelujah. Um, so I want to get a couple of spent hens is what they're called here in the U.S. They're called um, like battered hens or battery hens over in the U.K. But basically the hens that are getting a little bit older, they're not as useful to the egg factories and all of that stuff anymore because they're not laying as often. So best case scenario, they get auctioned off. Worst case scenario, they get dumped. Um, so I want to rescue a couple of birds, but I don't want to add three more birds into that zone. So need to add some stuff. So let me know what you think. Um, as we get this design going, obviously I'm going to clear all that junk out of there and I'm going to need help with asking you about landscaping stuff too. What kind of plants and things you think I should put back in there. Um, other things just to give them some more stuff to do, you know, chicken obstacle course, soccer field, you know, whatever. But I'm Sarah, the Real Simple Mama. I appreciate all your suggestions. Let me know what you think as far as a solution for that. And thanks for subscribing and watching, guys. Let me know how I can help.